Hello, my name is Mara and welcome to Books Like Whoa. Okay guys, I am really excited about today's video because it is the first sponsored book video I have ever done on this channel. I get offered to do this a lot, so just know that I get a lot of offers for this and this is the first one I have ever taken because I am genuinely really excited to read this book. And that book is The Jane Austen Society by Natalie Jenner. Just a big thank you to St. Martin's Press for sponsoring this video. I am very excited. And the reason that I am so excited about this is because as soon as I read the description of this book, it reminded me so much of the description of the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Society, is that what that book is called? Which is one of my favorite like cozy historical fiction reads I've ever read. And this book is giving me so many of those vibes. So basically the description of this is that after World War II in Jane Austen's hometown of Chawton, basically the estate where she lived on for part of her life at least, um, it, it's just kind of like in disarray. And there is a group of local townspeople in Chawton who want to come together to preserve her legacy to preserve the house and in the course of that we learn about basically like the losses that they've suffered during World War II and in, in other parts of their lives and I think this is one of those like small town books that is really just like a celebration of ordinary people living through extraordinary times like that is the vibe that I very much get from this. Also I love Jane Austen so this was really just like match made in heaven. So the idea that I came up with um, as a part of celebrating this new release, which I believe comes out on May 26th, was that I wanted to do sort of like, almost like the Oscars, like a best of different types of, of Jane Austen properties. So I wanna cover books and TV and movies and sort of just like other and tell you like what my favorite retellings, my favorite adaptations are, and also just like my favorite Jane Austen books. So. Let's get into my favorites of Jane Austen adjacent related media. So let's dive in. Okay, so let's start with just like The Mothership, which is Jane Austen's books themselves. So I have read all of Jane Austen's full novels except for Mansfield Park, which I'm actually hoping to read this year. And I have loved every single one that I've read. My least favorite one, but it's still really good, was Northanger Abbey. Then I think I would put Persuasion, even though I recognize that like from a literary perspective, it's maybe her best one. I would put that as fourth. Then I think Emma, Sense and Sensibility is my second favorite and it's basic, but Pride and Prejudice is my favorite Jane Austen. It's a story I just never get tired of. I reread it frequently. I often read retellings of it. I enjoy all the different media properties associated with it, as you will see as we go throughout this list. And I just have to say that Pride and Prejudice of Jane Austen's main novels is my favorite of the ones I've read so far. Uh, I do still have Love and Friendship. Sanditon and Mansfield Park and I think is Lady Susan another one so I do still have a few things from her left to read but to date Pride and Prejudice is my favorite Jane Austen book. And actually from there let's talk about straight up adaptations. So the kind of distinction that I'm making in this video is adaptations I think of as being directly using the work itself directly adapting it for screen basically screen or theater. So this isn't going to be adding new characters or taking liberty with the plot at all this is going to be straight up just like like adapting it for a different medium. So in terms of film, we actually have like, I feel like an embarrassment of riches in terms of really good adaptations. I have not yet seen the new Emma, but it is on video on demand. So I'm hoping that I can get to that here soon. But my, fa my runner up for favorite movie adaptation is the uh, Kira Knightley Pride and Prejudice. I actually think it's a really solid adaptation, but my personal favorite movie adaptation has to be Sense and Sensibility with Emma Thompson and Kate Winslet. I believe that came out in 1995-ish. And I think that it really, it does so many things well to me. A good adaptation, it's like an interpretation of the work. And I think what this, this adaptation really emphasizes is the bonds of family and how different people respond to their li same life circumstances in different ways. So I just think that the kind of reserve of Emma Thompson in contrast to Kate Winslet's sort of impetuousness is really effectively communicated. It is beautifully 
shot and I can't remember the director's name offhand but he's the same guy who did um The Life of Pi like he's a Chinese director who just has like these beautiful lush his movies are always just beautiful to look at and this is no different and the costuming is great it's just a beautiful adaptation that I think is really faithful to what the book is thematically about and really brings it to life for modern day audiences. And then in terms of a TV adaptation, there's actually been a lot of really great miniseries, but to me, Head and Shoulders is the Colin Firth Pride and Prejudice. I mean, like, it's just iconic. I feel like that has one of the best Mr. Collins's that has been brought to screen, though I do love the one in Kira Knightley's as well, but I think that Mr. Collins is really great in that it does a really nice job with Mrs. Bennett. I love, oh, it's just so great. And the, the Bingley sisters, like it's just, there's a reason it's iconic aside from that lake scene. It's just a fantastic adaptation. It's a mini series that just flies by. I feel like it's seven hours maybe, but like, it goes by in a minute. It, it's just, it's really stood the test of time in a way that some of the miniseries I feel like feel kind of dated. I just, this one I think is great. And then we get to what I would describe as retellings. And to me, the difference between an adaptation and a retelling is that a retelling is, is the same core story with the same core characters, but recontextualized in some way. So either it's in a different time period, uh, it has maybe a different setting, something like that, where it's the same story, but told a little bit differently. And I think that we have an embarrassment of riches in this area. So in terms of books, I would say my favorite, what I would call fan fiction retelling, and by that, I don't mean that necessarily derisively. I just mean that there's a lot of properties around, around Jane Austen where people are taking the story from the original and then sort of like writing a continuation of it. So I would say runner up for me that I like but don't love is Death Comes to Pemberley by P.D. James. I thought that was a fun like murder mystery take on the Darcy's, but I didn't, it didn't wholly work for me, but I do think it's like a fun idea. There's also a fun uh, series of with the Darcy's that is like a, a variant on each of the novels of that Jane Austen wrote, but with like a murder mystery in the Darcy's or the detectives. I can't remember what it's called, but I'll put a cover of one of those here. So I liked both of those, but my favorite fan fiction type retelling is actually a historical romance called Unequal Affections. And the reason that I like this one so much is that it takes a very simple idea, which is basically in Pride and Prejudice, if Lizzie had said yes to Mr. Darcy the first time he proposes, how might that have played out? And I just think that it's a really, it's it's well done. It has, it attempts the same style as Jane Austen without going too crazy. Like it evokes an verisimilitude that it, it still has like a kind of older pro style, but she's not trying to actually do a full voice of Jane Austen, which I think was really smart because that I think trips people up sometimes in these kind of fan fiction-y retellings. But I just think it's really well observed. I think it, it lets the same kind of discoveries that we get in the original Pride and Prejudice and sort of the back half of the book, it lets those same discoveries happen, but in the context where they are engaged. And so the stakes are just different. I like that we get to see more of, of Miss Darcy, the younger sister. Uh, yeah, I just think that it's a really, of the ones that I have read where it's somebody trying to continue the story of a, of a Jane Austen book, to me, this one is the most successful one I've ever read. And then in terms of someone just like totally recontextualizing the story in a retelling, you guys have heard me rave about this book. And because apparently I just don't want myself to have good things in life, I keep not continuing on in this series because it is now a trilogy and I have all three. But the first book in this series is Heartstone. And the setup of this is Pride and Prejudice, but with dragons. So Darcy is from a famed line of warrior dragon riders, and Lizzie is an herb healer. And they are in the middle of this war where all of these like evil creatures uh, that were long thought to be sort of dormant or at least like kind of kept at bay start coming back. And there's like all this action stuff. So with the first book leaves off kind of at this, this the first book really follows the pattern of Pride and Prejudice pretty closely. So I'm actually quite interested to see where the trilogy goes because then we're going to be getting kind of an extrapolation territory. So I'll, I'll be interested to see how it wraps up, but I can certainly wholeheartedly recommend this first one, which is just such a fantastic retelling. It's all the same story beats, but it's in this great fantasy world. And I just really love it and very much recommend it. So this is bar none, my favorite retelling of a Jane Austen book. And then I couldn't really think of TV retellings of 
Jane Austen, but if you have ideas about that, put that in the comments below. But in terms of movies, we've had a lot. I would say my runner up in this category is Bridget Jones's Diary, which is a contemporary retelling of Pride and Prejudice. And I say contemporary at this point, it doesn't feel that contemporary because it's set in the 90s, but you know, modern day. And uh, I think that one is very charming in a lot of ways, but my definitely my favorite retelling of a Jane Austen property uh, in a movie is Clueless. Clueless is such a great example of what a great retelling can do. Kind of, and I mean, I think I feel similarly about Baz Luhrmann's like Romeo plus Juliet, where it takes the original source material and makes it completely relevant or completely um, legible to a contemporary audience. I just think that it is fantastic. It takes uh, the story of Emma and puts it into a 90s 90210 high school. And Cher Horowitz is iconic. There's so many amazing quotable lines for that. Paul Rudd is bae. My The thing that I say all the time, whenever somebody has a burn is, that's way harsh tie. Which is of course the response to when she says, you're a virgin who can't drive, which is such a sick burn. Anyway, um, I just absolutely love this movie and I just think it's iconic, it's great. And then this one is not quite a retelling, but it is very much inspired by, so the only, I just wanted to shout out, and you guys know how much I love this book, but The Austen Playbook by Lucy Parker is an amazing contemporary romance, and the big setup here is that the main female lead is a part of a like live teleplay that is Jane Austen characters in a murder mystery and then the audience is like interactively choosing what happens to the characters so like it's sort of like a choose your own adventure murder mystery in Jane Austen's world with Jane Austen characters and then the hero of the book uh, owns the estate that it's being shot on so anyway I just had to shout that one out too you guys know I absolutely love that book I think it was like my third or fourth favorite book of 2019 so good um, but just a shout out to it as well. So then the last retelling I wanted to highlight, I guess I could have called this a TV show because it was kind of a precursor to when we had online only TV shows. I don't know. The Lizzie Bennet Diaries, I have the novelization. I have the actual diary here, The Secret Diary of Lizzie Bennet. But the Lizzie Bennet Diaries, which was an early, wildly successful YouTube series that is just still iconic. And it's, it's I think, maybe the best retelling I've ever encountered in terms of really making the original stories themes relate to contemporary social mores. So the setup is that Lizzie Bennett is a grad student in communications and her project is to keep this, uh, to basically have her own YouTube channel and um, to talk about her life. And the same events pretty much that happen in Pride and Prejudice unfold through her basically vlogging or uh, having like story times. And it's just so good. All like you get to see a lot of the cast of characters. Sometimes it feels a little contrived, but I think the, the master stroke in this particular adaptation is how they choose to kind of convey the Lydia Wickham situation, like the route they go with that. I think is so smart and I think is a good way to make a contemporary audience understand kind of what the stakes are for Lydia and for the rest of the family. Um, maybe it's hard, I think, to really replicate the rest of the family bit in our mores today, but at least it replicates sort of like what the shame factor would have been for Lydia with her choices. I just think it does a great job with that. And it's, I think it unfolds very satisfyingly. There's definitely some very swoony scenes. It's just super cute and I absolutely loved it. So I think it's one of the most successful retellings out there. And uh, this is only okay, but the web series is absolutely worth your time and definitely still holds up. I still rewatch that from time to time. So yeah, that is my kind of like best of Jane Austen media properties adjacent related Jane Austen things, uh, inspired by the Jane Austen Society by Natalie Jenner. It is coming out on May 26th. And once again, thank you so much to St. Martin's Press for sponsoring this video. This is one I was really excited to do. I'm really excited about this book. I hope you guys will pre-order it, pick it up, all that good stuff. I think it should be a pretty cozy book in these times. We're all looking for, for coziness here. So yeah, if you love Jane Austen, or if you're just like a passionate reader who, you know, cares about preserving literary history, 
this should be a book for you. So with that, definitely let me know what your favorite Jane Austen properties are, what your favorite Jane Austen book is, your favorite movie, adaptation, whatever. Uh, let me know that in the comments below. And yeah, I think that will do it for this video. So if you enjoyed it, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social medias if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below. And I think that that will do it. I hope you are having an absolutely lovely day today. And I will just talk to you soon. Bye.